Uh, welcome to this uh, session on uh, uh, characteristics of uh, globalization, how um, and the global sites and how uh, their surroundings are uh, getting shaped. In the previous uh, sessions, uh, we discussed about the reasons uh, and how how the globalization process and the reasons why and how they are uh, evolved. And then later we discussed about uh, the evolution evolution of globalization in uh, Indian urban context. And uh, uh, then later we discussed on uh, post liberalization characteristics of post liberalization cities. Now let's look at more in uh, more in closer detail about what how this globalization sites are 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 happening. How how this globalization sites are uh, characteristics and how they are actually uh, shaped and and how uh, they are existing in in uh, contemporary cities. Uh, uh, Saskia Sassen. Uh, very interestingly, she uh, she uh, said, uh, "Global city is a complex space where uh, multiple economies and work cultures come together to produce the complex organization and management in infrastructure necessary to handle the running of global operations." Further, we need to understand the new types of tensions, segmentations, and inequalities that are generated in this process and become visible in the space of the city. If we see uh, how a global, uh, uh, this globalization uh, influenced, influenced companies and their uh, related activities are getting located in, uh, in our Indian cities. So, if we see the characteristics in more detail, so uh, let us take this case. Uh, as this is a case in uh, Lower Peril in Mumbai, where this area used to be a kind of um, earlier, this used to be uh, mill lands where uh, the manufacturing act, it was a site of major manufacturing activity uh, during the kind of till the uh, 70s, 1970s and 80s. After that, the decline of mill activity and the shifting of uh, those activities to the peripheries, many of the industrial activities to the peripheries created this more kind of spaces uh, which were uh, kind of uh, available for uh, urban uh, development and re, uh, re uh, generation. So, during the after the 1990s, after the uh, globalization and the liberalization of the economy and the uh, and the and the inform development of information uh, technology and uh, the, these areas uh, started redeveloping and they started housing this um, uh, global companies today this is a place where you will you will see this kind of patches of of uh, exclusive activities. So, you know this reds are the patches of all these global uh, companies and their related uh, you know uh, real estate housing which, which is housing this high end kind of uh, attracting towards the professionals who want to work there, work in these areas and similar kind of things. So, if we see what is the actual characteristics of this global sites. You will t you will notice there is a clustering happening. You know when when you see this whole lot of this uh, companies come here, they come uh, they um, create these networks to with to other companies. Then they then then they need also whole lot of support uh, services, which which is the things like the transport and catering and and maintenance and and the cleaning that kind of activities. They also need high end kind of support services. They need a whole lot of um, of support for from the accountants, legal professionals technology professionals so they create these networks so they create these clusters okay so they most of so they get shared this kind of this support activities get shared between them that is one and the another thing is also that this is creating a sense of agglomeration of of this uh, this new center which is emerging so this uh, becomes a trend for for uh, the new development similar developments also comes in this area uh, next character is also the disengagement with the surroundings they st they these are also the islands of exclusive areas where which need not essentially relate to the surroundings what is happening so okay so there is these are becoming like island spaces which are having this uh, need uh, ha having this disengagement in the surroundings 
at the same time they are also defensive you know they they are kind of citadels within this uh, the, the current urban areas where they uh, since since they are very uh, uh, they house a very different kind of people and a very different kind of um, capital and very different kind of um, they work in a different lifestyle they live in a different lifestyle so therefore there is a separation which comes uh, uh, from the surroundings therefore they they also tend to be defensive this one should relate to this even through this globalization process how this has happened during in the past and how this is in in the contemporary situation this is the kind of exclusive separation with the surroundings is happening and um, they are also disproportionate if you see the kind of spaces the per capita per space used by a person is highly different from what is the just outside a person who is living just outside will be using a very different kind of uh, resources he will be uh, living in a very different kind of resource whereas the people living in these enclaves are having highly dis disproportionate um, access to space and access to services facilities comfort so that that creates this uh, kind of very distinct uh, 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 distinctions between these people at this uh, communities so at the same time there is also a temporal layered at the same time you will see this patches are not exclusive always they have this they are temporally layered so if you see in during the day time the 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 professionals actually the managers professionals they work in these buildings but in the night time it's actually the spaces of the people who come to service it clean it maintain it so it is actually it is not that the space is totally uh, global at all the time or its space is totally uh, kind of uh, um, linked to to the global activities all the time it is also temporal there is a whole, it it becomes a domain of a different kind of uh, people in the in the night time it is also totalized these are also the totalized enclaves we will see little more in uh, later also but uh, these are complete in in themselves they have they tend to have all the facilities within themselves and, and have very less dependency on the on the uh, on the surroundings and as we discussed earlier they also tend to become walled in and also they wall out so therefore they kind of uh, uh, kind of create that uh, separation and exclusivity at the same time it is very important and interesting as saskia sasan also referred that this is also leading to some kind of ethnic solidarity in the very close by areas often these activities are 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 adjoining this whole lot of immigrant laborers who are coming and staying in this close by areas and and they are they are kind of trying to assert their their role in the city so they 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 could, one is they tend to try to get jobs in this uh, in this kind of global entities on the other uh, in other ways they are trying to assert their their uh, uh, you know their location citizenship in the city and 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 then the, the community and also another interestingly it's also so this also le leads to whole lot of sprawl and suburbanization whole lot of uh, spread of activities in in the surroundings also happens so now having understood that let's quickly get into how to see vi visually see how these characters are working so these are the kinds as um, even uh, saskia sasan said these are the new frontiers within within our urban areas these are like frontier spaces where uh, the locals are having very less influence on you know the very locals will have very less uh, ability to change them or influence on so therefore they are kind of new frontiers so these are the kind of landscape of 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 spaces which where we uh, coexist and uh, you will you will often see this kind of juxtaposition this is a redevelopment of of existed um, um uh, the industrial chal developments and you will see this kind of uh, this global uh, companies very juxtaposition next to each other and there is a whole lot of production of privatized public spaces which is happening this is a uh, photograph of a of a um, area um, of a it uh, area in bangalore 
where you will see a certain kind of public space uh, this produced within the within this uh, global spaces which are are of uh, kind of explaining a character which is which these companies also you know the, the way the companies also function so it 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 imposes a certain kind of order it imposes a um, lot of whole lot of written and unwritten rules how to behave in this public spaces what to do what not to do so these are having uh, these are changing the way how people behave in this public spaces also they have a kind of um, major um, influence on on what is a public space and what is the code of conduct in this public spaces these are also this kind of totalized uh, uh, kind of blocks of 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 the becoming the totalized blocks of the city where everything is available and it becomes a, you know people uh, go there and as if they have uh, left the indian uh, context and they are living in another uh, another world so let's look at what are the the locations what are the soft locations where this uh, global influences are likely to uh, to kind of influence so they are central business districts emerging new business districts on the peripheries shopping complexes new typologies of public spaces airports international terminals transport connectivity and uh, new business districts new gated enclaves in the peripheries so now let's see what is uh, how this global sites and immediate surroundings are actual spatially getting located here uh, this is a kind of a, a, a plan of a, of a street in lower parel Uh, where you will see these these huge floor spaces of blocks are are the sites of global companies where they are getting located and uh, you will you will find uh, the immediately outside on the street there's a whole lot of organically grown systems of uh, commercial activities and 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 also there is a whole lot of informal systems uh, which are happening in the street space this is just just outside it's it's only a matter of one wall which which divides this entire activity how this just explains us in 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 nutshell how this kind of coexistence you know how this economic coexistence actually tr translates to spatial coexistence and what is the what is the resultant characteristics which is evolving out of this uh, in in this urban spaces now let's see it in more in uh, closer in detail you will see uh, this whole kind of these these activities which has evolved during this various phases of um, of economic change so what happened is that earlier this was a totally a street which was available for movement and this used to be the footpath okay and after this uh, decline of uh, the mill lands there's a whole lot of uh, people were jobless and they were trying to find their ways to uh, create their own jobs and they started uh, putting their activities on the footpaths and and eventually they over a period of time they got political support and therefore they were almost given a kind of legitimacy to to stay in those places now they have developed into almost like a, a temporary structure almost permanent but still temporary you know that kind of uh, situation where uh, where where they 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 locate themselves and again another layer you will see of another layer of more temporal kind of uh, kind of activities of uh, vending activities happening and then therefore the actual public space the pedestrian is actually left to walk on the main uh, space for the vehicles so let's see this process also in in terms of how it is in 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 overall uh, this uh, soft things for soft uh, sites uh, uh, happening so this is this is an example of uh, this in mumbai the 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 c link which was uh, built uh, to connect the uh, the areas of bandra and to the uh, towards the connecting to the, towards the central business district of nariman point so what is happening here is that this kind of ceilings propose this kind of projects are actually focused towards this uh, connecting this kind of elite um, car oriented uh, people uh, who lives in this uh, bandra and and all along the west coast to connecting to 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 this uh, business districts so huge investments are being going into this kind of projects to to exclusively help these people to um, to to do their activity quickly so therefore the entire city is actually working towards uh, supporting them whereas the same thing um, um uh, you will you will see this uh, uh, the this kind of eight lane expressway connecting uh, uh, gurugaon to uh, to the uh, airport of uh, delhi 
So this, it's very important to understand that separate that who is the beneficiary of this kind of uh, kind of major projects and who is what is that their um, uh, what is their their uh, their proportion in the in the overall uh, population and what is that actually uh, this uh, their um, I mean how this is changing this kind of projects are changing the spatial structure of cities and is it really worth it? So that that is the question. Remains and also the cities are going through major branding exercises to to attract uh, to set a stage set for for global companies to see uh, you know the to the, the, the as if the image has changed you know these are kind of make believe spaces where which are uh, created so that as if as if the entire entire context has changed like this okay so these these becomes very important sites of global interactions where uh, where this becomes uh, the kind of phase of the of 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 the uh, tend to become you know to show that as if it has become the phase of urban condition similarly in mumbai there is a whole lot of waterfront developments and at the same time uh, it's another uh, location of uh, this uh, global activities are also shopping malls so it is not that just the uh, capital and 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 uh, uh, people and and technology these are not the only ways of globalizing but is also the products so when this global products come to come to indian cities they demand a certain kind of uh, condition where they will get located so you will see this this kind of exclusive malls which are which are kind of uh, locating this kind of high end brands and and the entire mall is is actually shaped to such that they will have to come up to uh, to to the level that they can accommodate these products so uh, so the, the, it's it's like you know the, the this product demand this kind of a context so on the other side it is also the while the product is products are demanding this kind of a, of of um, of of a s certain kind of um, stage set the the from the, the 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 local conditions are also trying to grow up to that uh, to to create that setting to attract them so these are kind of again the make believe bubble spaces which are creating this so called the illusion of 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 a of a global uh, uh, living these uh, so we can see this sequential experience of so uh, of of uh, how you experience a product and how how a global uh, product needs to be experienced in spaces or or actually or um, uh, creating this production of this public spaces these are also it's very important to note that these are also the places where the citizens come close to these products the, here is a place where they need not buy also but they can see them so these this is a quite a lot of um, um, kind of shaping the spaces so now let's look at the architecture of the space of flows this is the kind of spaces which are created in this in this uh, global uh, um, um, enclaves where it's the message is almost silence you know the it's it's almost uh, don't want to uh, reveal what what it is it's, it's almost silence so there has been quite some interesting um, i mean uh, discussions on this uh, as iblings uh, said architecture reflects to the new frame of reference will no longer be dictated by the unique the authentic or the specific but by the universal as manuel castell says architecture whose forms are so neutral so pure so deafness Uh, that they do not pretend to say anything and by not saying anything they confront the experience with the solitude of the space of flows as as even uh, john short explained this uh, spoke about this bland scape which are creating by this homogenization this homogenization is also because of the consumerism which is also flattening uh, or the kind of flattening uh, situation or along the urban conditions the global situations and as marka says that super modernity produces the architecture has become a careful use of medium to g g get this globally understandable image as if otherwise it will not be understand understood by the global so as 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 even uh, gautam bhatia said these are the spaceships which came from the sky and got located in our in our areas but they may be uh, more relatable to the uh, to to the to the globe but not to the local 
so there is a whole lot of image building exercise going people sit in very remote areas and take decisions what should be the image and companies are desperate to make attempts to achieve what what should be the how to build an iconic image for themselves and finally what is happening to the global uh, citizen what is he is under constant pressure he is living a life of 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 having um, uh, the 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 life where where it is it is uh, flooded by this whole lot of attention seeking and 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 this kind of uh, desperate um, um, uh, kind of developments and he has to uh, perform to to be able to survive in this kind of conditions this also creating a need for a certain sophistication of life you know the, the, the in 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 a current urban situation it it, it is very important to uh, to have a certain sophistication to survive you know the, it's 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 a play it's it's about time it's about it's about ability to um, ability to kind of do certain activities such within a certain time frame uh, such that he he can survive you know he he is having this urban space and this time and how how a person a citizen is able to sophisticate himself to survive is 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 a challenge so at the same time it's very important to see how the locals are also asserting the you know the actual local people uh, who pre existed this kind of urban uh, uh, global influences are also kind of asserting themselves these are the kind of public spaces they which is just a position them uh, and they they uh, conduct their functions it is very interesting to see that locals are also asserting their uh, their position in the city through two ways one is through permanent ways where they are trying to redevelop as we see in the as we saw in the in this image this kind of redevelopment of this um, of their this chawls and and this informal settlements all these are happening by the local assertions the local people they make nexus with the politicians to and and the builders businesses to ensure that they get their uh, housing in this in this global city at the same time they do also this temporal means you know the, the, these are the so you can at least in a year to 2 3 days of the Uh, uh of the city the, the the city is totally flooded by this kind of uh, this ephemeral uh, functions where the entire city comes to stop and this whole lot of religious uh, related activities uh, asserted by the locals takes over so as interestingly uh, lingam said religion and ethnicity do become an important vehicles for articulation of people's identity the ways in which they mobilize resist marginal resist marginalize or attempt to consolidate their their positions in the city these are the images of how the uh, the 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 global um, uh, is been asserted uh, i been been uh, by the locals this is relating this is also leading to a whole lot of kinetic system of uh, cities which city which is developing which uh, uh, rahul merotra has discussed this in detail how he says that how this uh, parallel system of this kinetic city uh, has evolved against this formal system which which is existing um, uh, by um, uh, developed by the formal systems it's i quote here um, um, as uh, he's uh, rahul merotra says architecture is is not more only spectacle of city nor it compromise the single dominant image of the city it contrasts festivals such as diwali dasra navratri muharram uh, durga puja ganesh ganesh chaturthi and many more have emerged as spectacles of the kinetic city their presence pervades and dominates the popular visual culture of indian cities the grand adjustment that often challenges the formal production of architecture city as an elastic urban condition and not a grand vision so the meaning of this this of the space is not stable spaces get consumed reinterpreted and recycled the kinetic city reinterprets the static city to create the new spectacle while this this kind of processes are happening within the within the uh, urban areas there is also this increased placelessness of fragmented development are also happening on the peripheries now let's look at this this two um, uh, current extreme systems of city building and how they are uh, existing in in the current context so if you see this is an example of uh, bandra kurla complex and dharavi is an excellent example of how they are so close to each other and they are the representatives of so different forms of city building uh, planning and perceiving and building 
so both the systems actually evolved by a uh, kind of reclaiming the water okay so therefore they 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 gone through a very similar kind of a process and they have both are having their in their own ways they are both are globalized you know the even the activities of dharavi as a whole lot of global activities and even bandra kurla complex was specially mentioned uh, specially built to locate this global companies so this is an excellent um, um, it's an interesting way to understand how this two divergent systems of of perceiving cities and building cities are happening so here we will see um, the bandra kurla complex is is whatever bandra kurla complex is not is what dharavi is and whatever dharavi is not is what bandra kurla complex is so the, therefore they don't allow this systems to penetrate into each other you if you go in in bandra kurla complex you will not get a street food anywhere the 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 people who are working here will have to really go uh, far distances to have their simple food Uh, for their meals whereas in dharavi there they they have been the the people have been really kind of uh, kind of able to they are kind of defending their own way of city building uh, against the formal way of city building they have been resisting the uh, the formalizing or or the so called formalizing the so called rebuilding in in terms of formal terms so th- they are they are kind of they don't they uh, they defend their own system and they are totally f- uh, fighting against this formal system whereas uh, the bandra kurla complex the formal system is totally fighting against not allowing the informal or the organic way of uh, uh, building cities so in the uh, so if if you see in the formal system the infrastructure is developed first and it waits for the users users to come in okay whereas in the in the people were uh, gen, uh, generated city the user generated settlement of dharavi you will see the infrastructure enters at the last stage of the development cycle okay but it is very important to note that both of them have compromised on the environment both the systems have kind of kind of disturbed the Uh, the how the natural systems exist in this place uh, for example the the the, the flooding which happened uh, in the past decade actually uh, was actually because of the whole uh, lot of reclamation activities happened it it reduced the flow of the river and therefore uh, they uh, the it caused major flooding so it is very important to note that there is a whole lot of uh, uh, this uh, kind of disturbance is also happening to the nature so now having uh, seen this this very divergent system of of a uh, plan um, designing and building uh, um, uh, our situations let's look at what what actually indian system is about i mean I'm, it's an it's just an attempt it's it's an attempt let's make an attempt to understand is it what is this uh, uh, indian system is actually characteristic of and how it it is a system of coexistence and mix rather than this Uh, kind of isolated uh, systems so here uh, it's very important to uh, see how this uh, in the in the current context the fusion spaces are 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 evolving in 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 indian context or or in in rather in lot of global context as um, as uh, manuel castells and others are discussing uh, that a basic tenet of globalization is being in a networked city the need for adjacency is reduced and and the primary modes of exchange of information are creating fusion spaces that could make a multiple layers of functions fusion spaces could increase the comfort versatile versatility and efficiency of the space itself and the users reflect it the network spaces is helping spatial restructuring through fragmentation and then recombination to increase efficiency the process has potential to gradually reform the way individuals families communities and companies engage with the city though the though network city have not led to dispersal of functions across geographies instead they agglomerate to facilitate basic face to face meetings sharing of common ancillary resources are continuing to be the crucial for their location so um, this is this uh, this system of 
network cities are creating new opportunities in the way uh, cities can be replanned and it's how how even the individuals can how they can take choices of how they can locate themselves in the city and how they can uh, be more efficient you know so the, uh, uh, because of the change systems of adjacency at the same time let's look at what is this indian street and uh, f um, as an example of what is an indian uh, so called the system so generally it is normally it is discussed that indian uh, city spaces are very ambiguous and the public spaces are there is there is no order uh, in or um, it's a general but actually you will see there is an order in the chaos as we discussed earlier these all evolving because of a certain kind of history and certain kind of uh, systems which are have developed to support a certain kind of people and support a uh, certain kind of systems to coexist within the same situation so you will you will see go in further detail you will see how these are providing a alternate kind of economy a kinetic uh, a system which which is supporting a whole lot of an alternate kind of system to coexist along with this global kind of systems and also the in current situation you will also see whole lot of public spaces in in post liberalization uh, happening through negotiation this kind of negotiated spaces which is actually parking lot also becomes a, a public space for playing in on the different is and there is also this whole lot of this uh, who occupies a space and, and this is a negotiation constant negotiation between who occupies and when and who come goes back and who when and they come back and how they assert themselves at the same time we have this whole sense of blanket approach to towards towards uh, uh, this um, viewing our cities it's very important to uh, get out of this blanket approach and look at uh, the uh, kind of very specific situations and also it's very important that the we there might be a very uh, uh, intention may be there but uh, there might be an intention but what it actually intends to what it actually results to create how what kind of conditions it creates are in the surroundings is very important this kind if this kind of built forms uh, keep happening in our cities then then uh, then obviously our uh, streets are not or 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 the the surroundings or the commons are 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 going to lose their importance so finally whose city it is who who wants the city who wants our urban areas is it this uh, a, a small section of global people global people who have a strong influence or is it this huge masses who uh, who 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 conduct their own functions in everyday uh, activities is it who's who what is the uh, actual uh, uh, question of who who owns the city and who has the right to decide what should be the design and what should be the kind of uh, development and how they need to be integrated so it's the, the role of urban design i would like to summarize here is indian cities are characteristic of very diverse urban and even levels of development and it is going to continue in the in the nearby future as well the therefore the mix in everything is the basis of indian system which is already existing the mix into everything any system can mix into anything that is what the system which which is already exists and it needs to be taken forward it's also about boundaries how do, how we de develop our boundaries how do, how the domains of the boundaries are going to help to help this mix and multiplicity and variety is an, uh, another important uh, character and of course cities are always about people the people need to be at the center so therefore i would uh, like to conclude by saying this the the state of mind of urban designer in this context we are in we are in a complex state of confusion of partial reflection of what reflects and what happens behind the cause of it so this it's a very it's a very important to uh, see that how how we understand what is there in the current context and what it actually reflects versus what actually it is and therefore i would say uh, that any form of a uh, development the search for an urban designer everyday urban designer could be any form of development could be argued as a disruption therefore in a everyday search could be to build a symbiotic relationship between the most likely and the most even unlikely systems of life so i would like to uh, conclude here uh, at that and uh, hope uh, this was helpful Uh, to understand the contemporary urban situations and how this uh, impact of globalization or shape shaping our sh cities
Thank you.